You guys have heard me use this term. Let's go ahead and explain what it is, a gene pool. What is a gene pool? If you know what a population is, you know what a gene pool is. A population is going to be, as we described, a set of individuals that contribute of the same species that live in the same area that interbreed. Well, here's a population of frogs. I can see different traits. I have green phenotype, I have red, I have purple. A gene pool, <clears throat> a gene pool is considering the population level and biologists are more concerned with the gene pool than just looking at the population as a whole because the gene pool consists of all copies of every type of allele in that population. So I can actually see the frequency. That's how many green frogs are occurring within that population, how many purple frogs, how many red frogs. So I'm considering every type of allele within a gene pool. What genes contribute? To that population. For many locations on a chromosome where we find alleles, this is called a loci, there are two or more alleles. Remember that we get the two, one from each parent. <clears throat> so a gene pool is going to consider both. So remember that we only see uh, the dominant allele since it's going to mask the recessive allele. In a gene pool, you also consider that recessive allele since it can be inherited subsequent generations, as we saw with Mendelian genetics. Uh, so a gene pool basically gives us information on all kinds of genes present, as well as that distribution in a population. What I mean by distribution is how many individuals have that allele. How often is it found? That's going to be termed a frequency that's coming up. So we're going to go ahead and analyze a gene pool. We're going to use the Hardy-Weinberg principle to analyze gene pools. Uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is stating that an allele, so the genotype frequency within a population, remains constant from generation to generation in the absence of other evolutionary influences. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is basically, basically going to be a nice equation that's going to show us how likely we are to find that genotype or phenotype or allele, I'm gonna teach you both, um, in a population without evolution occurring. So I do want you guys to appreciate and know that this isn't the case in real life. We absolutely have different influences, evolutionary influences occurring like natural selection, uh, selection pressure, um, like different genetic drift events that I'm going to teach you guys, mutations are definitely occurring. Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is assuming that none of these take place. Okay, It's a nice way for scientists to account for the evolutionary influences because this is what you should see in the absence of evolution. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So here I'm showing you an image of a gene pool so we can actually see the population of flowers. So in the gene pool, it looks like the allele for red flowers here. I have red flowers. That's going to be shown with an uppercase R. I'm going to use that in your example. And I have an allele for white flowers. That's a lowercase R. Recall from our inheritance lectures that the red uh, allele is going to be dominant since it's an uppercase to the white lowercase R. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and use Hardy-Weinberg formula to calculate the frequency of the alleles. So remember that the alleles are uppercase R, lowercase R. Those are the two different types of alleles within a gene pool. And I'm only going to give you a one um, trait example for Hardy-Weinberg for this course. So to calculate allele frequencies, we use this equation. That is P plus Q equals 1. P is going to stand for the dominant allele. I'm going to go ahead and put the dominant allele in the place of the P position in that equation. Q, you probably guessed it, the recessive allele goes there. So my dominant allele, actually let me just point this out. So in the place of P, I'm going to go ahead and put the value for R, uppercase R. That's the red um, allele. I can actually see its position on this chromosome. It's locus. Well, the other locus is going to have the other allele 
for white flowers, lowercase r. That's going to go here. What is going to go there? I'm going to give you values. Basically, I'm going to give you a frequency of one of the alleles. You're going to have to find the other frequency. So I'm telling you guys that in a population, 80% of the individuals are going to have the uppercase R allele. Okay, that's pretty high. They're going to have that dominant red flower allele. Well, then now I want you to figure out what is the frequency for the recessive allele. We're going to use this equation and we plug in our numbers. You can probably actually do this in your head. I want to show you the math. Let's look at that algebra. So again, we're going to let upper R represent P for dominant allele. We're going to let the lowercase r, the recessive allele, represent Q in our Hardy-Weinberg formula. Okay. If I give you a percent value, I want you guys to change that to decimal form very quickly. You divide by 100, so 80 divided by 100 in order to do that. Basically, move the decimal over 2 to the left, so that's 0.8. So I place 0.8 in the place of P plus Q. Q is what I'm trying to figure out, equals 1. Always 1. That's my formula, 1. I'm going to set it equal to 1. Doing algebra, we subtract 0.8 from both sides. Q is going to equal 0.2. That is my allele frequency. Oh, let's go back. You can, for this course, if you tell me the answer is 0.2 for the recessive allele frequency, I'm happy with that and I accept that 100% as your answer. Um, good practice is to change that to decimal form. So multiply by 100 or move the decimal over to the right to 20%. Is your answer for Q. That makes sense. If 100% is our population, and it is, that's symbolized by the one there, 80%, well, 20% to reach that 100%. That will give you the allele frequencies in that population. More individuals are going to hold the dominant red allele than that white recessive allele. That's what this is telling me, this information. <clears throat> okay. How can we use Hardy-Weinberg to actually find the frequencies of genotypes in a gene pool? So I can find the allele frequencies to that individual letter that we just worked with. What about genotypes? So we're getting a little bit more complicated here. So how many individuals are heterozygous for flower color? How many individuals are homozygous dominant? How many individuals are homozygous recessive? those three genotypes, we use a different Hardy-Weinberg formula. Genotype frequencies are shown by this formula. That is P squared plus 2PQ, so that's 2 multiplied by P multiplied by Q, plus Q squared equals 1, always equals 1. What are these letters saying? <clears throat> well, remember that P was the dominant allele. So P square in Hardy-Weinberg formula is telling me that those individuals are dominant homozygous. Uppercase R, uppercase R. Yeah, I don't have that here. Uppercase R, uppercase R. Let me actually write that down. I think that's important. I can just do this in real time. Yeah. As you guys are taking down your notes. So dominant homozygous, uppercase R, uppercase R. I think it even fits. Okay. Heterozygous will be uppercase R, lowercase R. Recessive homozygous, you guessed it, lowercase R, lowercase R. All right. Okay, so I haven't changed anything as far as the values. We still have 80% of the allele dominant um, frequency. 
so uppercase R, and we found out in the previous uh, example, 20% of those individuals will hold the allele for that recessive allele, lowercase r. Now I want to know the genotype frequencies. Well, I know the value of P, that's 80%. I know the value of Q, that's 20%. You have all the variables. Plug in your numbers to figure out the frequency for dominant homozygous, heterozygous, recessive homozygous. So let's check it out. Remember, I want you guys to give me decimal form, not percent. It's just better practice to use decimal form, especially if you get more complicated with this formula. And so remember, we divide the percent by 100 in order to do that, decimal over 2. Okay, I'm going to stop saying that because I know you guys know that. Uh, let me just look at the P square portion of that formula right now. If I plug in P square, so remember P is 0.8, so I go ahead and figure that out, 0.8 square. This value, just running this operation right here, I don't even have to look at that other formula. Just looking at 0.8 square is going to give me the genotype frequency for dominant homozygotes. Uh, recording, yes, sorry. Okay, so plug that into your calculator, do 0.8 square, you're going to get 0.64. This is the frequency already. You've figured it out for those individuals that are going to have the genotype uppercase R, uppercase R. That is dominant homozygotes. 64%, remember, multiply by 100. 64% of individuals will be dominant homozygotes for red flowers in that population. Okay, uh, running similar operations, if we look at 2 times P times Q, that gives us heterozygotes. So I do the number 2 times the p-value, that's 0 0.8, times the q-value, we figured out that's 20%, so that's 0 0.2. 2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, this is going to give us, in your calculator, plug it in, boom, 0 0.32. 32% of individuals will be heterozygotes. My last operation, q squared, lowercase r, lowercase r, so remember q is 20%, so that's 0 0.2, 0 0.2 squared. That's 0 0.04. Lots of students forget to add that zero. They do it correct in their calculator, but they forget that zero, and they actually always write 0.4 for me. Don't forget that this is a very small number. If you're going to have a low allele frequency, it should be a small number. Okay? And you can always check your math. I'll tell you that at the very end. But my value is 0 0.04, so that's 4%, not 40%, 4% of those individuals will be recessive homozygotes, lowercase lower, lowercase r, lowercase r. That's white flower color. You can always check your math by, you guessed it, adding all those values should equal to 1. That's double checking that your work is correct. So Hardy-Weinberg is always equal to 1. That's because the population is always at 100% that I'm going to give you in these examples. So if you do 0 0.64 plus 0.32 plus 0.04, that should equal to 1 if you did this successfully. And we have found our values for our genotype frequencies. Again, changing that to percent value. 64% is dominant homozygous, uppercase R, uppercase R. And I want to highlight that now, because you have the genotype um, figured out, you can also tell me the phenotype. Dominant, dominant, that's going to be red. Heterozygotes, remember that was 32%, that's uppercase R, lowercase r, that dominant allele will mask the recessive, these will show as red flowers. 4% of individuals are recessive homozygotes, lowercase r, lowercase r, no dominant allele is masking the recessive, so the recessive shows that is white colored flowers. Very little flowers, very little um, individuals in that population will be white because that is a recessive allele. Usually, I might trick you, usually the recessive alleles will be low numbers in populations. We will have more examples um, later on in the lecture of a handout that I have for you guys. Oh, and you will see a very similar um, problem on your exam. <clears throat> so not forgetting allele frequencies, how did Hardy Weinberg come up with this equation? You guys aren't going to have to know um, this exact concept um, as far as trying to figure out how that formula came about. Basically, he's using probabilities using Mendel's um, punnets and his uh, likely outcome for 
generations, for offsprings in that generation. We call that Punnett's is giving me a probability, so you have a chance here for these individuals to occur. All these squares represents those probabilities. Hardy-Weinberg is assuming those probabilities in his equations. <clears throat> for allele frequencies and ultimately for genotype frequencies as well, which is going to lead to phenotype frequencies.